which is why we talk about both of us in our work accepting people where they are and part of accepting people where they are is acknowledging yes they're going to have flaws yes there's many things they can do to be better but accepting them where they are actually gives them a buy-in to you that you actually care about them so that like what you and I have as friends I care about you and you care about me enough that if you say something I'm going to value your input of fixing any part of me because we built that bond don't try to go fix somebody you have not bonded with yet because they're going to go get the <laughs> out of my or you could be like wild man my wild man guys my wild man is such a fixer and he and he still hasn't like broken free of that um and i in my res like res not responding self in my reactive emotional self I'm not very kind, and this is a topic that comes up in our relationship a lot, is his desire to fix people. And that kind of gets into where this comes from. So yeah, we can sit here and talk about don't fix other people, but until you go the one step deeper of figuring out why it is that you're attracted to fixing other people, like that's the one step deeper of it all. It, you know, you can see the problem, and then like, okay, but why is there a problem? And you just trickle it down. And so what happened to Wild Man, myself, and even Jimmy is when we were children, we were made responsible for the emotions and feelings and thoughts and patterns and habitualness of adults in our life. And so, I mean, we often heard things like, you know, when you did that, you made mommy angry. Uh, no, mommy, you get to choose how you feel and how you react. Ain't nobody make you feel nothing. OK, number one. Number two, we hear things like, well, I have to yell at you because you don't listen unless I yell. That's making that's making a child responsible for someone else's feelings, emotions, reactions. And that's that's not OK. And so we constantly go around like seeing other people in their states where they are. We feel um, obligated, that's the word, to like control the situation of everybody else's emotions. And so we want to fix it because we used to get in trouble if we didn't fix the adult's emotion in our life. Well, and you're hardwired with that kind of uh, parenting growing up, and, and you're just making me dawn on myself <laughs> about some of this. You're hardwiring in, the, in their brains that there is a right way. And I never realized it until right now that I, for many years, always was like, Wait a minute, they're doing it wrong. Whatever the thing was that somebody was doing, oh, they're doing it the wrong way. The right way is this, this, and I would get angry. I would get upset about it, and I would want to fix that. And I never, damn. <laughs> I'm <having laughs> so sorry. Moments where I'm like, that's why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it happens but I also love it when that happens but I'm not that way anymore I'm a, a lot yeah. less like that anymore but yeah there were many years where somebody did something just a little off from what it was supposed to be the right way and I yeah. wanted to fix it and and I never understood why they got so angry at me when I would want to fix it yeah yeah don't you love when those OSD moments just pop up like live it on the podcast we need to come up with like a moniker for what that is, the the OSD OMG moment or something. <laughs> yes. yes, I have had quite a few of those. And like, even as I was going through this, I'm just like, oh, this is so hard for myself. There's a song called Fixer by Britt Morgan. And I just, I love it so much. And it used to be me. It's not who I am today, but basically the lyrics say, she's a fixer with no one to fix her, a lover that won't love herself, except that was a narrative that I planted in my mind because I was so into fixing everybody else and not myself because I was distracting myself with everybody else's feelings, everybody else's emotions, because almost like a martyr of, oh, I have to sacrifice myself for everybody else. And that makes me a good person, except I was ignoring all of my problems and ignoring and pushing them down, pushing them down, pushing them down and only becoming more reactive and more resentful and more manipulative 
with the people around me because I'm like, why don't you see what I'm doing for you? I'm trying to fix you, except they didn't want to be fixed. And it wasn't my job. I was overstepping my welcome and my and the boundaries. Well, and I think a lot of times people get upset at someone trying to fix them because they see flaws in you and you're supposedly the fixer and the presumption is you're trying to fix someone that you yourself have no things that need fixing. But the problem is almost everyone trying to fix other people have shit in their lives that they need to fix too. And so the other person sees that and go, yeah, get out of my face. Yeah, so like old Brittany was like trying to fix everybody. And then healed Brittany had gone like, whoa, way opposite where I'm like, I can't tell anybody anything. I'm still working on myself. I can't talk about personal development. I'm still personally developing. And so you have to be careful with that two opposite things and two opposite reactions. I'm glad that I've gotten to the place where I can see somebody's problem and they can vent to me and I can go, wow, that's hard. And I, you know, I love to listen to people's stories and be there for them and have empathy for them. But there's a very strong boundary of this is your problem that I will be here with you for, but it's not my responsibility to fix it. Uh, that's on you. I can give you tips, tricks, things I've done. Uh, I can lead you to my podcast or my book that I've written. You know, I can do that, you know, but uh, I can't fix it for you. I have a sweet, sweet, sweet family member, and I know she listens to this podcast, so I'm talking to you. You know who you are. She is the family fixer, and she wants to make everything right, but so many times, all of us who have gotten to the place where we're just like, stop. She doesn't want to hear it, but you make it worse. You make the problems worse when you try to fix it and manipulate situations. Just step out. Let it be. Let it be what it is. Stop stressing yourself. You're stressing yourself out over a problem that's not even yours. Come on, guys. Well, and that gets to the heart of why we fix. Like there's people that feel like it's their onus to take on. Um, yeah. And this person in your family, maybe in their eyes, they're like, hey, I'm the glue that holds this family together. And so therefore, I need to be the one that tries to fix things, because if I don't, it's just chaos and chaos is not acceptable. And so if I try to fix it, that makes it all better. And like you said, sometimes not so much. Yeah. And I mean, uh the OSD of it. I understand this is her trauma response. She went through trauma as a child and she was made to feel responsible for everybody else around her. And so she still re feels responsible to fix everybody else around her. And especially when it's people that you love. A lot of this time, the people that are fixers, it's the people that they love and they can't separate. Again, going back to that first statement I said, they can't separate their empathy and responsibility and they feel responsible because it's a family member or it's a best friend or it's a spouse or, you know, they feel they get those two confused and they just want to fix it to make it all better. And, you know, another family sort. Guys, I was just laughing with my grandma. The amount of family I have is astronomical. I can name 50 cousins and not be done. OK, I have a very large family, so I have an example of a family member pretty much for any topic we ever do. But specifically, um, I had a sibling who went through a really tough time and as a child and everybody wanted to fix their problems anytime a problem would arise they just wanted to make it better because they felt bad for them that they had had this really tough life i wasn't awarded that same whatever that was but i'm thankful that i wasn't um and the problem with this person is because nobody let them fall on their face i don't like that term but you know what i'm air quoting here um Fix trying them trying to sorry <laughs> trying to fix my sibling and fix all my siblings' problems turned into my sibling didn't grow ever did it because there was no push to there was no they they didn't have to grow because everybody solved their problems for them and you know it's taken that person falling on their face. It's taken feelings hurt from everybody in the family. It's taken huge, massive walls and a complete crash for this person, for everybody to back off and let them fix their own problems. And lo and freaking behold, 
they're doing so much better in their lives now that they have to fix their own problems. And we just listen and be there and do what we can or what they ask us to do. Because like you said earlier in the show, if someone asks you for help, that's different than putting your nose in somebody's business. Yes. But yeah, they're probably doing better. Well, and, and, and there it is. Like when you fix someone else's problems, you, you kind of take away a little bit of the accomplishment, the permanency that comes from them figuring it out on their own. And, and you've done this to me a lot over the course of a lot of the things I've been through the past few years that you helped me with. You're like, Jimmy, I, I can't help you. I can't fix you in this. Um, here's some things I would recommend, but I can't do that. You're going to have to do the work. And I was mad at you at the time. I was like, come on, throw me a bone. I need some relief. And I, I realized, I took to heart what you said, that, that when I started working on it, I felt more ownership of yeah. the that needed to take place. And therefore, it stuck. Whereas if you said, well, do this. And then I do that, but I don't feel immediately better. Brittany, you were horrible. You didn't fix me. What's wrong? And I would have like deflected attention back to you saying that you're wrong. But if, if it didn't work with me, who am I going to blame? It's still on me. So it's like it's almost like you have a vested interest if you do this work internally to fix yourself rather than giving other people this is what you need to do and, and to fix yourself. Did you go keto and thought you had to give up wine? Well, let me introduce you to Dry Farm Wines. It is the world's first sugar-free alcohol that is lower than your typical wines. Organic, made at local farms that do it the right way. Most of the wines that you buy are from three really big companies, loaded with additives and preservatives, so many dozens of those kinds of things. You don't want all that junk in your wine. So. Go to dryfarmwines.com slash Jimmy, and they will ship you these wines. And just because you listen to this podcast, Dry Farm Wines is going to give you a bottle in your first order for just one cent. Go to dryfarmwines.com slash Jimmy, and uh, you will get your bottle of wine for just one singular penny. Go check them out. Dry Farm Wines, you guys. It's wine o'clock somewhere. Let's go get some there more. is such empowerment. I try to explain this to people. There's such empowerment in figuring it out on your own. And I know it's not fun. It's not easy. Uh, you know, bring a wild man back up. <clears throat> when I began to do a lot of emotional work, you kind of can't help if you're in my life to feel kind of convicted to work on your emotions and feelings. You know, when you, when you're around somebody, you just they just kind of rub off on you. And, you know, wild man's rubbed off on me before. Same thing with Jimmy. Sorry, not sorry. The people in my life usually end up on some kind of personal development journey or we gravitate towards each other because we're already on some kind of personal development journey and we're all working on ourselves. But, you know, wild man had like felt really challenged by some of the things that I was telling him. And uh, I was like, dude, you have to have more emotions than sadness and happiness. You, you have to be able to, to identify more than just that like come out of that five-year-old mindset you, you got to and he's like well I just need you to tell me I don't I don't know what I'm feeling and I'm like and I'm supposed to know what you're feeling and he's like yes I need you I, give me a list like tell me I need you to spoon feed it to me and I told him no which was very frustrating for him he's like but you've done all the work and I need to, the study guide and I was like no because then you're not doing the work all you're doing is reading my work, which is not the same as what you need to do. And so, again, when you're in these situations trying to fix people, understand whatever it is that you're trying to fix about them, um, it might not be the right thing. Like they might they got to go deeper into themselves to figure that out. And if that fix that you come up with isn't the right thing for them, they're going to be more mad at you. And it's like in your mind, you think you're helping but then they're going to be more resentful that you shared things that weren't helpful than yeah. if you didn't say anything at all and said, you know what, I'm going to be here to support you. But you figure it out like there's yeah. almost a, a, a sort of strength in that position of I'm not going to give you the answer. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you homeschool your kids. You could easily give the girls the answers to tests that they take. Yes. But you're like, you know what? 
I'm going to be here. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to help you. If you have questions, I will, I will answer your questions. But when it comes time for you to take the test, guess what? It's on you to fix the, the answers to the question. 